Welcome to the first video of uh, uh, how to make epic and uh, orchestral music course for beginners. This is the this is the first video in a series, and every single video is uh, accompanying uh, a text-based tutorial available available that you can read on my website. Since these videos are accompanying the text-based tutorial, they are uh, I'm not explaining. Uh, that much stuff uh, in the video because it is written down in the tutorial. For each video, uh, for each video, a link to the exact tutorial will be uh, added to the description. Basically, I'm not what you would call a YouTube personality. Too many filler words and uh, long pauses. So I hope that will be okay with everyone watching this series. In this series, we're going to make uh, a simple epic orchestral track that is about uh, a minute and uh, 12 seconds long. We are going. I'm going to use uh, instruments that I personally use for my compositions. Uh, unfortunately, there are so many virtual instruments on the market. It may be difficult for you to re replicate the exact uh, sound if you are using other libraries and if you are a beginner I really recommend you use uh, an all-in-one library such as Albion One or Symphon Symphobia. There are links to these libraries in the uh, tutorial linked in the description. We're going to listen to the track in a, in, in a second. I want to say that this is a very basic simple track, not very realistic, the orchestration isn't uh, what a real orchestra would be able to uh, record. We are actually making a, 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 an orchestra, epic orchestra mock-up in a form that would suit a total beginner who doesn't and uh, who, who never made this kind of track. Obviously you need to know some music theory and if you do not know music theory there is a complete uh, text-based text course available on my website. I will link it in the description as well. Finally, obviously this isn't, you know, two steps from hell kind of track. This is not the same level of quality. But this kind of simple tracks work very well for beginners who just want to, you know, learn and start somehow uh, build a foundation upon which they can um, expand their, their knowledge, skills and experience. All right, let's listen to the track. I'm going to make this track from scratch. Before we start, uh, keep in mind, you need to know music theory. And there is a full text-based course using uh, a DAW software and MIDI grid on my website. I will provide link in the description. You also need to know what hardware and software you need to create uh, music on a computer. If you've never uh, done this before, uh, there's a lot of information Part 4 of the text-based tutorial explains how to create a simple uh, piano track uh, in a DAW software. And this particular video you're watching right now is going to accompany part 5, part 5th um, of the text-based 
tutorials in which we are actually starting uh, in which we actually start making the track so let's get to work all right let's get to work uh, in this series of videos I'm going to stick to the essentials I'm going to create a track but I won't be explaining too much stuff as I uh, uh, make this track because everything is actually explained in the text-based tutorial so let's get started first we need to set up a tempo of our track uh, and I'm going to um, set it to 100 beats per minute I'm choosing 4x4 four four, uh, time signature it fits the, the idea of the track so I do not have to actually um, change anything uh, here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a chord progression a simple chord progression for our track that is actually an AAA form which means it's the same thing repeating over and over again just building upon the basic idea the basic idea being this chord progression we are going to make right now I'm going to create a track first uh, I'm using mouse right now but later on we're going to create a well, I'm going to show you. Right click uh, in my in my Reaper, insert in track, or double click on this uh, dark column. It works the same way. Uh, this will be my first track. I'm going to select mm -hmm, this workspace here, and I'm going to insert a MIDI item. <coughs> uh, I can open it later, uh, well, soon enough, and create uh, the notes. But first, I'm going to create uh, to add load a sampler. So I'm opening my FX tab, panel, contact. <coughs> and this uh, has loaded my contact sampler. And now, contact 5. Uh, my own sam my sampler is loaded. I do not have too many libraries here because this is my auxiliary computer. I am actually making music on another machine where there are many more libraries, but these few will do. To create a chord progression, I'm loading a concert ground patch or instrument from Contact Factory library. You can click and drag or double click it uh, if you prefer. Now, uh, what's quite important is that I'm doing two things. First, I'm turning off the reverb and it doesn't work. Click oh, uh, because if you have, let's say, 20, 40, or 80 tracks and an instrument in every one of them. Uh, having a reverb uh, on on every single one of them is going to uh, be very expensive on your CPU and beside smudging the track and you want to create a single reverb uh, for an entire track during the mixing process so right now for every single instrument turn the reverb off the next thing I'm using I'm doing is using the purge function of contact by clicking and uh, clicking uh, update uh, sample pool this will actually clear your RAM memory from all the samples and they will be loaded as you play various notes this is because you actually you are actually saving the memory instead of having a lot of, a lot of instruments with one, 200 or 500 megabytes uh, uh, for each loaded into memory you're, you're having a, 
one megabyte or, or 20 megabytes or 70 megabytes and it saves a lot of RAM so if you have a, a weaker computer you can still load an entire orchestra. Okay we have our sample uh, sampler loaded and an instrument loaded it works. We can now create our chord progression so I'm double clicking in Reaper opening uh, I open uh, my MIDI editor and let's take a look at um, the text based tutorial and I want to add a couple of chords so we have a, a, a minor G major C major in inversion and F major chord let's start with the, the, the A minor uh, it's on A, A5 <laughs> Sorry about that. I have no idea why on Mac um, I'm having trouble, you know, fitting the, the mouse to the, uh, the the click to the, the note to the grid. No idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of boring. I'm selecting all the notes and I'm lowering the velocity so they wouldn't be so aggressive. Notice notice how they how loud they are on this kind of high velocity. If I lower the velocity they will become uh, not so loud. Now, before I forget, I want mm, to humanize these notes. This is explained later in the series of the written tutorials. In Reaper, I'm pressing H uh, and I can change the timing of the notes. Notice how they uh, slide left and right. Uh, we humanize the notes slightly. Oh, oh, notice the velocity, how it changes. We do this because as humans we are not perfect and creating slight changes in velocity of the notes and, uh, and their timing makes our uh, virtual mockups more realistic. Alright, we have our core, core progression. Right now, let's listen to it. This chord progression will be the base upon which we are going to build our entire track. We we'll just basically we're going to copy this piece over and over again and build upon it. Uh, I'm going to make a slight addition according to the tutorial, <laughs> uh, written tutorial. I'm going to add some a bit fancy notes mm, here and and here and. Um, here. Yeah. And that's it. This is our um, base chord progression. In the next part of the series, we're going to create some basic rhythm and some string ostinato <laughs>